they say heartbreak is a part of love. Does it need to be that way? Or can we be taught to avoid the pain by using observation before selection? Hey, how are y'all? Oh, you beautiful. I'm, you know where I am. <laughs> I know where you are. You're in the birdcage. <laughs> yeah, in the birdcage. So I'm, I'm like really hopeful right now motorbikes don't go by or anything like that so if it happens I'm sorry that's okay so welcome by the way for those of you who are new listening in this is my friend Melissa we hang out together we love to dance this is what brought us together the love of music wonderful people good times good food good love uh, yeah. I love having you in my life. I met you in Costa Rica. You've been a wonderful addition. Like you've come into the fold of my inner circle and I absolutely adore you. And not only do we have a meeting of the souls, we have a meeting of the minds because you and I are in a similar field, which is mental health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, did you like the little, um, uh, was it the comedian today that I sent you as well? Like about the therapist and the stripper and that whole thing. I I love it. So yeah, we are very much in the same field. It's amazing, right? Like I'm a psychotherapist, you're a dating coach, but then you also have this other background that's so relevant, by the way, to everything that you do in dealing with people. So yeah. Cool. The video she's talking about was this this girl who's like you know, I realized that I really like my therapist and I like her because I feel like she cares for me. And I kind of wonder, like I sort of realize, is this like another version of somebody going to the strip club because they feel like the stripper that they're seeing cares for them? Like, am I paying $130 a week just to feel cared for? Like, that was really smart. I should make it rain right now. Yeah. And you know what, though? I, I actually do really care about my clients. I do. Yeah. You know, um, I think that's like one of the hardest things about my job is like having the, the right boundaries. Right. Because I really, really want people to do well. And I have to always keep in mind, as you would, too. Right. Like it is a coaching relationship or a therapeutic relationship. Right. So. I actually find that I care about them all and I have to actually like reel myself back, right? And stay reflective because you get attached. Yeah. Yes. You you get attached to their journey, you get attached to their outcome. Um, I'm really good at uh just sort of being present with them in the moment, but then sort of releasing um yeah. afterwards i i don't i don't carry their pain but the beauty i find in my work and i'm sure you've seen this too is being able to witness evolution yes yes and you know that's uh i love that you even just brought that up right now because that's something uh that we talk about right and i was thinking about that you know you'll say to me do you believe that people can change right that we can change and i, I mean of course i do <laughs> right I, I I think that's the most beautiful thing about being a human is that we get to change and we get to grow and I know we were talking about like the DNA right like we have the DNA that we can turn on or off mm -hmm. and it's the same with our brains right like we can make new neural pathways in our brains we just have to train ourselves to do it right so I I love the journey of watching someone do that and, and it's like an honor right mm -hmm. to like be there with people while they do that and sometimes you get to see these moments where you're like like you feel it right because they had this it's like this awakening or this awe that they were in that they this relationship with themselves that they were building right and it comes together and they go wow I I felt love for myself like that's like such a big like it's so amazing right and you know, if we didn't get those things when we were younger, if we weren't, if we weren't made to feel good about ourselves or if the people who were supposed to love us or take care of us didn't make us feel safe and protected, 
it can be really hard to make yourself feel safe and protected and, and trust yourself and love yourself. Right. So like my practice, I'm always, I'm always working from that angle that I want people to be falling more in love with themselves. Uh, the mm-hmm. I love that. At the end of every session, I always ask, how are you feeling? And I got chills yesterday because my client said, I feel in control. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. And so see how you got the chills, right? Yeah. Like that makes me think of, um, I had, so I was thinking of the self-love thing because it's such a big thing. And I had a client say, you know, this week I had to pull my car over because I felt this like rush of like, it was self-love. And then she goes, but at the same time, I felt this tremendous amount of grief. And I go, yeah, it makes sense. Right. Because she goes, this is the first time I've ever felt that love towards myself. So the moment I felt the love, I also recognized that I've been punishing myself for 47 years. Right. So it's like, that's the thing. That's the journey. Right. It's like you get you get like a little bit you get both. There's always like a healthy grief. Right. Like every time you take a step forward because you realize like maybe what you didn't have. So there's like a healthy grieving process as you heal as well. It's it's a release. Right. I want to get to our topic really soon. But oh, man, you and I, we start talking. We just go off. But it's here's here's kind of my analogy for this because I I I'm all about like analogies, right? So I got my glass of water right here, and yeah. it's like negative emotions that we store, all these little things that happen in our lives that hurt us, and those tears that we don't cry in that moment because ah, I can't do that right now. I'm at work. I'm in front of somebody. I don't want to show that pain to you know my mom. It's like I don't want to show you my fucking tears, right? Like right, and so you swallow the tears. You swallow the tears. Mm-hmm. And this is your body and it fills with all those tears and the air between the water and the top is the space for goodness. And when you have those moments where you let go of the pain and you cry it out, and even those happy cries, you're releasing that pain with the happy cry, making more room for goodness. And so I just, that grieving process is so important, that release of emotions and especially the tears because it's a detox Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people suppress a lot of emotions. Absolutely. You know, and we can link that to what we've learned as children too. like in our homes, you know, with sadness, something that was expressed was there space for sadness or anger. That's another really big one, right? Like anger. And, you know, when you think about those two emotions, how they show up in your life as an adult, I always ask people, like, what did you learn about them when you were a kid? And a lot of people learn it was not safe to be vulnerable. Yeah. So the the torture, the trauma, the pain that we go through as children often leads into us choosing wrong relationships. And that's Mm -hmm. what I'm going to talk about today. I sent you a TikTok. I'm not going to yeah. play TikTok because I don't know if I'm going to be able to with someone else's material, right? So I'm not necessarily going to play it on my platform, but I sent it to you because we've been dying to do another podcast episode and I've been waiting for like sort of the right inspiration for it because it has to click for me. Yeah. And I saw this TikTok and I was like, oh, me and Melissa, we have to talk about this and we have to break it down. And I said to you, I sent it to you and I'm like, listen, let's do this. Let's go through this and like make notes about what we're seeing in here and talk about what is sort of triggering our own thoughts about what she's saying. And so I want to kind of hand it over to you to start because I was like, did you make your notes? You're like, yes, I did. Yeah, I did. Yeah. So, you know, so when I watched it, I thought, okay, so... uh, she was discussing you know these traits that a person can have almost like a formula right to find someone who you can be in this long-term relationship with so they were conscientiousness right uh neuroticism the level of neuroticism and then the other one was um adventurousness right level of and emotionally stable so conscientiousness motivated emotionally stable low neuroticism which is emotionally stable and moderately adventurous Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So actually, so when I watched it, I thought, okay, she was referencing a certain, I guess it was like a, a talk she went to or something like that, right? From, I guess he's a psychologist or someone with a PhD anyways. So he he's written some books. So I kind of went and looked into that a bit. And then I thought, you know, what are big five personality factors, right? Mm -hmm. And it's conscientiousness, neuroticism, uh, extroversion, agreeableness, and openness. Yeah. So what I kind of felt like they did there was they kept the first two, conscientiousness and neuroticism, right? And then they took uh, extroversion, agreeableness, and openness and kind of combined that into like level of adventureness. Does that make sense? That's kind of what I thought they were doing there. It does. And I would say like agreeable, sort of, you know, agreeable, like appropriately agreeable. And, and I say that because I saw like a Jordan Peterson you know, somebody did a TikTok with the Jordan Peterson talking and he said, you know, like you want agreeable, but you you want appropriately agreeable. Like if I'm in, in a crowd with my husband and somebody's coming at me and being like mean and disrespectful, I would want my husband to be disagreeable to that person. So agreeable, but appropriately agreeable. Yeah, because if you're too agreeable as well, that means you are a people pleaser. You're in a fawn response, right? You agree with everything, right? So you're actually, it, it's not about you anymore if you're really high in agreeableness, right? And we know that women are more agreeable. We have a higher than, than men, right? Yeah. We tend to be more agreeable than men in general, right? And I've done, I've done the big five. I've done the personality thing a couple of times, right? But like agreeableness really reflects the degree in which a, a person needs like pleasant and harmony, har, har, harmonious relationships with each other, right? And we want that. Um, and it's characterized by trust and straightforwardness and cooperating and, and all of these things, right? But if we're too high in trust. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's yeah. just... That's kind of a, a point too high in trust. Like, so yeah. it was tied to Shiro, which was the talk that she went to, wrote those yeah. books. And he was saying that 35% of married people are happy. And the reason why we have such a low percentage of happy couples is because most people are getting married based on love endorphins. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, is that about the no kissing for three months dating rule? Like, is that people who are kissing to see where it goes, developing emotions before they know who someone is, and then finding out what the issues are, but then saying, but I love you, so we need to work on this. I, I talk about the two levels of brainwashing, which is we need to kiss to find out who someone is. And then mm -hmm. we're told fighting is normal, fighting is healthy. Fighting and, and arguing is what you're doing when you're trying to change somebody. Mm-hmm. You know, and it, it's interesting when you talk about the no kissing for a three months dating role, right? Because somebody who is extremely high in agreeableness and high in trust is not going to listen to a role like that, right? right? Because they're going to go along with whatever, like the, if a woman's very high, okay, well, whatever the man wants, right? And it's interesting, agreeableness as well, when you look at it, like in cor correlation with like, kind of like, you know, like your sex life, right? And sexual communication, agreeableness actually is negatively associated with expressing preferences during sex and expressing sexual need and desires, right? Because it, if you're in that kind of, if you're in the act of being together and doing this, right? You just, again, if you're very high on agreeableness, you're just going to do whatever they want all the time. So we want to find like a balance there, right? Because you want to be able to communicate what your sexual wants and needs are as well and feel like you have power in that. Yeah. Right? It kind of made me think about something here because I get a lot of people who say, uh, what, no kissing for three months? What if I get to the end of three months and they're a terrible kisser or they're bad in bed? And, you know, like I kind of, I, I kind of think to myself, don't you think communication is part of sexuality? All of our bodies aren't the same. I mean, Melissa, I'm sure you, you like to have some things done that I would have it done differently. Right. And mm. so you might like it a bit harder. I might like it a bit softer. Whereas this part, I might like it a this, you know, harder. You might like it a bit softer. So it depends. And, who, and so somebody who's going from you to me is going to take what they did on you and try it on me to see, you know, what's, what does she like here? How is this supposed to go? And I'm supposed to let them know what my differences are. 
how I like it. If you like a lot of tongue and I don't, I got to let them know. And so people who are saying, oh, if I get to the end of three months and they're a terrible kisser, I'm like, but wait a second, don't you know communication is part of sexuality? And now I'm kind of wondering, are you just too agreeable and you just never communicate what you like, period? Yeah. And you know, as you were speaking, I kind of had this little sad feeling come up in me because I thought about like these statistics around, you know, when you ask women, have you ever had an orgasm? Do you actually enjoy the sex you're having? Um, is sex painful for you? You know, like most, like, I think it's like 90 some percent of women will say that they've had experienced like painful sex and never said anything about it. Hmm. Well, I'm at some point in their life, they're just like, okay, I'm up there. I, you know, I, I will take it for the, uh, because look, I hit menopause. Mm -hmm. So bet your ass. I had painful sex because I didn't know I was even in menopause. I thought I was stressed out and too tense. And it turns out I was just like drying up. Mm -hmm. I was drying up and I was, uh, you know, my, my soft tissue was disintegrating and, and, Mm -hmm. It's not still to this day, it's not always pleasurable for me the way it's happening. But for me, and I don't have trouble communicating, to be honest, right? Like, I don't, listen, I, I taught my husband what the hardware needs. Some things he was really good at, but I taught him how to kiss me and I taught him what I needed down there when it comes to fingers and tongue. But I sometimes just, you know what? I'm just having the sex and it's, I like the effect. I like the effect Mm -hmm. of closeness. I like the effect of knowing that this is something that I do with this man. And it's, it's the way that I treat him unlike anybody else. I'm not even usually in the mood for sex because my libido since going into menopause has dipped considerably, but I like the effect that that right. I don't know, just the mental it's more mental than physical for me if that makes any sense to you it does yeah I, when I said painful sex I was saying more like um, men who are having sex with men that is very rough and they don't like it and they don't say anything about it and they just let it happen again and again and again because they're very agreeable to it yeah right? so they're actually not enjoying it yeah. right they're just it's just happening, right? So, and, and again, this comes back into that conditioning and that brainwashing, right? Like that this is what I'm here to do for a man is to give him my body or whatever it is, right? So, I mean, I think we both know <laughs> that when you communicate about these things, it can get a lot spicier, a lot better, a lot more exciting, right? Like you got to talk. I mean, I'm a talker. So, you know, <laughs> yes. But like, uh, I'm probably, I'm probably like a dirty talker. So <laughs> you I gotta talk, too. right? Oh, I do that too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I like it. <laughs> like I, I like talking. Right. So yeah. So the agreeableness, you gotta, you gotta be able to balance it. Right. It's not just all about somebody else. It's about you too. And it's like coming together and figuring out like how those needs, you know, how we're going to, how we're going to find a nice balance here between what it is that we need. And, you know, maybe, yeah, sometimes we do some stuff that we don't love the most, but we do it because we love the person. <laughs> you and know, the, we're looking at this super high divorce right now. And I have, I have, I have people like, seriously, the selfish short-term thinkers who come on my live stream, they just, they just keep throwing darts at the dartboard, trying to hit something that'll stick against my logic. Right. And I love those they literally can't. Um, But one of the ones that have come up recently is show me studies that say no kissing for three months works. And my answer to that, first of all, is did you ask for a study when you were moving in for a kiss or if she moved in for a kiss on the first, second, third, fourth date, if she was willing to have sex with you right away, did you say, whoa, wait a second, I don't think we can have sex yet because I need a study. I need a study to show me that kissing you is going to work out in the long term. And I and then I say to him. I say to him, we've been doing the kiss to see where it goes for decades. The study has been done. It doesn't work. Look at the divorce rate. Mm-hmm. And like, let's talk about building some anticipation too, right? Like, ooh, like I think I I love that. Like, you know, making it wait, make them wait for it a bit, right? Talk about it. 
That's a good thing to do. Talk about it. Think about it. Fantasize about it. Mm, right? I think that's all very exciting. It's let it marinate in there for a bit in your mind. <laughs> having done that journey, it is absolutely amazing. It is amazing. So one of the things that kind of sort of popped out at me a little bit, and I wanted to get your take on this, is uh, she talked about change. Like he he asked her, like, do you think people can change their adventurousness? And she says, yes. Like you know, I. Because he he's like, I'm low in adventurousness, but I like to surround myself with people who are high in adventurousness because it pulls me out into situations that I wouldn't myself design. And so he's like, you know, do you think people can change adventurousness? And she's like, yeah, sure, absolutely they can. And it kind of made me think about, you know, I wrote this big long list and it's it's nothing but pure human decency, right? It's a long list, but it makes complete sense and you wouldn't cross a single thing off of it honesty, trustworthiness, responsibility, uh, you know, work ethic, all of them. Yeah. And I had a guy come on my live stream the other day and he's like, you know, if I'm like just four things on that list, like, wouldn't you consider me? I'm like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Because I'm looking for somebody who meets me where I am. And then we have this thing out there about potential. We shouldn't be choosing somebody based on potential because that's where you can trip yourself up. So what do you think? Do you think when we are out there looking for our long-term partner, should we choose somebody who seems to have the potential to be like, uh, uh, almost there, maybe they can make it seem to have the potential. They're saying they want to be that person. They're saying they want to be that person. Or should we choose the one who is? Well, it's an interesting question, right? Because it's subjective. <laughs> so are we talking about the potential that I think that they have or yes. is it actually the potential that they think that they have the potential right? that you think they have yeah so I mean it, I think that you have to have a conversation about that with them and their ability to grow right because the issue is here we do change right so if I met someone and they said I am it I am here this is it. This is like, you know, I would, I, that, I wouldn't really like that. So I want potential, yeah. right? I want more potential, more. I think I have more potential, but I haven't tapped into yet. Right. So like, I want someone who sees their own potential to grow and wants to grow. Right. So when you think about this thing around like adventurousness, well, yeah, your level of adventurousness can change, right? Like you always have your innate qualities about you right like some people are more nervous uh, like our temperament right but when you think about something like adventurousness so I do exposure therapy with people right so you know you feel the fear you do it anyways you feel the fear you do it anyways so these are like safe risks that you know we take right and we could be it could be oh I was really nervous to come on this podcast tonight but like I'm exposing myself to it and you know now the next time I do it it won't feel as scary right so you jump out of a plane once the next time you jump out of a plane it's not going to be as scary because we also like just like with a like any substance those hits that we're getting of adrenaline right like adrenaline junkies mm -hmm. right you need more after that right like that's why you know I'm in BC and I'm riding up a, a like chairlift and I see these mountain bikers you know without the bar down hanging over the side and right because they they're used to it right because they expose themselves to it so if you wanted to change your level of adventurousness you could right and it was interesting when he said like I like somebody to you know pull me kind of out there like moderate right like moderate but the thing that I thought about that too is Maybe I don't always want to be the one pulling you out. Mm, right. But, you know, like I, I, I would like a balance there as well. Right. Like I'd like somebody who pushes me when I need a push and I can push them when they need a push. Right. But I don't think I would always want it to be like, I'm more adventurous. I have more adventurous than you. And I'm always like bringing you out to do these things. Like, and I'm helping you like develop and experience things. Right. So I think like you have to have a nice balance there when it comes to like a lot of those traits that they talk about in the video. Right. Neuroticism though. I mean, you know, uh, that can be a tough one. Yeah. <laughs> 
No to neuroticism for me. Okay, so you know, I did actually bring this. I have the red flag. I have a red flag here. I do have a red flag in my hand. So I will say that that red flag, you know, sometimes when it comes to neuroticism, uh, you have to wave a red flag because some people talking again about temperament and traits, some people are much more prone to neuroticism. And this means that, you know, it could show up as a personality disorder. It could show up as being narcissistic or antisocial or, you know, these types of things. When we're talking about somebody who is very neurotic, and I like the way they said it in the video too, it's like they can always find the negative, right? Like, it's not like they're going through a period of depression that was triggered by something, right? It's it's an ongoing way of being for them. And I, and I know there's people like this because I work with them, right? I work with them. Mm. Speaking of mental health and, and like how it affects relationships, this is my guideline. And I, I want to know what you think about this. So the guideline that I say is if your mismanagement of your behaviors has a detrimental effect on my mental health and emotional well-being, I have to go. Mm -hmm. You agree with that? Yes, because, you know, it is not our jobs <laughs> to be like be someone's therapist that we're in a relationship with or be someone's coach that we're in a romantic relationship with or carry all of that weight, right? Like, and I hear this thing all the time. People say, you know, relationships are 50-50, you know, or, oh, it's like- Relationships are hard. Relationships are work. Fighting is normal. Fighting is healthy. And, you know, if I'm depressed and, and, yeah. and, and bipolar, I deserve love too. Yeah. Well, you know what? I say relationships are a hundred percent, a hundred percent. So let's, let's work on showing up the best that we can to be in that relationship. Right. So that's how I'm showing up to all my relationships. That's how I want to show up to all my relationships. Right. I want to show up a hundred percent. Right. So if I'm showing up a hundred percent and this other person's consistently showing up at 20, it's not my job to bring them up to a hundred. It's just not right. So I'd rather, I'd rather meet somebody who's at a hundred percent too right feeling good yeah. right leave the wounded bird on the sidewalk yeah because really neuroticism like emotional instability right really what it is it reflects the degree to which a person experiences the world is threatening and beyond his or her control mm. that's what it means. that's the definition of it right so people with a higher degree of neuroticism tend to be characterized by you know uh, anxiety, hostility, anger, psychological distress, self-consciousness, impulsiveness, vulnerability, like all of these things, right? And also, uh, they don't get as much pleasure from sex as people who are less erotic, right? Like, so that's going to show up in every single part of your relationship. If you have somebody who, like, think about that again, experiences the world as a threat and beyond his or her control. Yeah. Right? So, uh, I mean, I work with those people and I help those people, but that's not, that doesn't sound like the rock that I need <laughs> in my life, right? Because when I'm thinking about a long-term relationship, I'm thinking about stability. Like I'm a strong person, right? I'm trying to show up hundred percent. And when I do show up at 90 or 80, I need my hundred percent on the other side. Yeah. I don't need somebody who's going to bring me down. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Agree, agree. agree. One of the things that they uh, they pointed out is high adventure people are fun, but they don't make good partners. Mm. Yeah, I mean, so, uh, you know, I was thinking about this today and then I, I said, OK, Melissa, reel it in because they were talking about this in the context of long term relationships. Stable but relationships. You know that I um I think of I have clients who are in polyamorous relationships, you know, I have people who are in open relationships where they really love someone. And you know, I was thinking, well, maybe those are the people that are really high in that adventureness that we're talking about, right? Like these people who have these more kind of open type relationships. I like people who are high in like that extroversion and all of that, right? But you know how I said, okay, we were kind of taking like, what was it, extroversion and openness and kind of putting it into this adventure. I'm having a hard time saying adventure in this category. 
Right? So adventurousness. <laughs> So there is a positive link, right, between being an extrovert and having uh, extramarital affairs. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, good point. Okay. Here's a quote from this. And people will say this too. Like people will say this when they argue for kissing to find out who someone is and then dealing with the consequences of that being a mistake. They say heartbreak is a part of love. Does it need to be that way? Or can we be taught to avoid the pain by using observation before selection? So here's what I would say always about opposite. So I'm always about shadow integration and all of these things. So what makes love so amazing is that when we have it, that we don't want to lose it. Right. So like love is almost like not love without the possibility of heartbreak. Right. You can't almost separate them. Right. Oh, but why? 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 So, why does it have like, let me, let me, let's kind of, okay, listen, let's go back, 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 back outside this culture. Let's go into way back into when we lived off the land, when we lived in tribes. Mm hmm. I would say heartbreak is a part of love if 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 you lose somebody that you love through death. You say death, yeah. Like that's what I mean. So that's like, and that's what I'm saying, right? Like love, love is so amazing because it's like if you don't have the person, and yeah, that's what I was gonna say, death is the ultimate heartbreak, right? I mean, could we like go through our lives like never hurting anyone else? Probably not, no. And I mean, like all of the heartbreaks that I've had along the way, you know they have made me the person I am and they've taught me like a lot about myself right because I felt I always feel like even a little bit of heartbreak if I'm the one who's like I'm going to end this yes oh I know right? you know and I'm even thinking like you know I know we're talking about like romantic relationships but long-term stable relationships even friendships yeah. I don't think we talk about this enough actually there's like a heartbreak involved in those too. Like if you've ever had to cut someone off who's been in your life for a long time, who's a friend, yeah. right? Like that can be extremely painful too. So I always feel, I always feel some level of heartbreak when a relationship ends, um, even if it's me, the one who is doing it, right? They actually say it's harder, it's harder to end the relationship often than yeah. it is to be broken up with. Right. So, I mean, but does that mean we should just be like throwing ourselves into these situations, expecting that our heart is going to be broken? No. Yeah. Right. Like if we can make it better and make it easier. Right. So just to like accept that that's the way it is and just to give of self just going, well, you know, uh, I'll probably get hurt anyways. Right. Like that's actually more like surrendering to some kind of core belief that like you know all people will hurt me yeah right? right or like I will be alone in the end right so like yeah I think you should you should take all the steps necessary to ensure that your relationship is developing in a safe stable way but one thing I always say to people too um, an interesting thing about relationships when you were creating a secure bond is the first stage of that is always doubt right that is part of creating a secure bond because doubt means that now you're like could this person do this for me so that means you're starting to think about it mm -hmm. right and then you're going to start to talk about it right so you have doubt so then you have to build trust around that you have to secure that and then you can start to move forward, right? Yeah. You know, this, our, um, our kiss to see where it goes dating culture is mm -hmm. literally giving away the benefit of the doubt. Exactly. It's because giving... it's like we're uncomfortable with it, right? So, oh, I, I'm, I'm doubtful. So what will I do? Um, I'll have sex with him. Yeah. 
And, and here's the thing, like, and this is what really messes us up. Like I'm, there's all these little puzzle pieces coming together, I feel right now, right? Or we have this dating culture where we're told to give as women, by the way, this is enforced on men. I've had men come and say, oh, you know, like, and, and I've had men say, I didn't kiss her fast enough. And she was mad about that. And I'll tell you, I did that too, because I was insecure. And I was trying to secure him with my vajayjaya and my sexuality, because I know that would secure me. And so I was trying to toss the same, you know, methodology out to him to see if that would hook him in. So we're kissing to see where it goes. We're giving the benefit of the doubt, because we are in a culture that normalizes pain. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, again, like this idea of like, there is so much more to relationships than just physical contact, like intellectual stimulation, like, come on, bring it to me. Right. Like there are so much that can happen through conversation, through looks, through ways of being, uh, through catching someone's eye, like across the room and knowing you're looking at each other, the little text messages you can send each other, building up for all of this like there's so much magic in this space right that can be created and it's almost like we're dumbing it down to just this physical thing uh, it's not almost like like it is 100 mm-hmm. percent our dating culture has dumped it, dumbed it down to physical do the physical and then figure out the rest yeah. And I mean, honestly, like, I know there's this thing that people keep saying to you, like, well, what if it get to, th- you get to three months and it's not good. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well then you need to like go work on something here because if you're going, if you have this person and you have this you're, and you're doing this thing, it's going to be, it's going to be good. Right. It, it might not be like, you know, a, a movie or something like that or there could be nerves or something like that but I think you can get a pretty good idea of what kind of kisser someone is or maybe what they're going to be like in bed in a lot of ways in a lot of ways you can dance with them you can see how they talk you can see how they flirt you can see how they move like even like how you when you brush up against each other what do you feel there's so there's so many ways to figure these things out without actually doing them you can feel the chemistry right million percent if if there's a mental and emotional connection it just it 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 creates an electricity and excitement and electricity and no kissing is it no affection it's just creating a space where affection is genuinely shown like the more i get to know you the more i like you the more i like you the more warm and fuzzy i feel about you that's affection i start to feel affectionate the more affection i feel the more affection i show and so that's when you start you know like i say come up behind them when you're standing in line and put your arm around them and and put your head against their back or when you hug them you hold them extra long and you tuck your head into their chin I slow danced in my kitchen when he used to know kissing for three months dating well and he never made it to a kiss by the way my husband won me back before we got to a kiss and now he's married with two kids by the way right so like it's it's fascinating how you can build a build and that methodology has completely disappeared in the last few decades to the point where I bring it up and it's an uproar, which by the way, I see this, I see the change on TikTok. I had somebody from Business Insider reach out to me and say, hey, want to write an article about the three month probation rule. And I'm like, girl, I brought it to TikTok in 2019. Happy to see you here. Let's yeah. talk about this. So it's exciting to see a shift, like it's starting because here's, have you noticed there's a movement with women because we're not held back when it comes to jobs. We're not held back when it comes to education and we are making our money and we are making our lives and we don't on men to have a credit card to to live in a house we can buy our own homes like so much has changed in the last hundred years and we're saying look like I see this I see this so much I'm happier being alone living alone than being with somebody where I'm having a parent-child dynamic with because they just don't pull their weight mentally and emotionally and physically I mean like pursue me come get me work for it right like and show show me. me Not just work for it because listen, they'll work for it. Don't just talk about it. Yeah, show me. 
don't just take me out to dinner. Show mm -hmm. me you're hardworking. Show me mm -hmm. you're conscientious. Show me yeah. you're consistent in your behaviors. Show me yeah. you're responsible as fuck because I need that to build a life with. And show me you're in control of your thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. Yeah. I mean, I I decide I like watching people. I like watching people, you know, do things that they're really passionate about. I like seeing people like in a flow state. I like watching people, how they interact with others uh, on relational and interpersonal levels. Um, and those are all things that like I keep an eye on and I enjoy watching uh, all of the people I'm in relationships do those things. Do the things they're good at, be around the people where they light up, right? So mm -hmm. there's like so many ways that people can show you who they are, yeah. right? It's so beautiful when you're looking for those ways, right? And again, you know, we've dumbed it down. Yeah. We've just taken like this all away and just turned it into like this sex thing, right? And I think people misunderstand your rule because... It, I think that like some men are like almost they take it like a punishment. Guys, men yeah. don't. Guys do. Because they, yeah. they are. Yeah. They are. They are. They're being punished for being selfish short-term thinkers. And they got away with it because, and now I'm, I've, I'm calling this the biggest scam in dating is getting a kiss on a woman's lips before she knows who he is, inciting the chemical that's an amphetamine, aphrodisiac, and antidepressant. So she gets emotions attributed to him that he hasn't deserved yet. And so they're yes. being punished now for being selfish short-term thinkers instead of being rewarded for being selfish short-term thinkers. Yeah, yeah. And you know, uh... I feel like the sad thing about it too is that, you know, a lot of women are like, I would like to do that, but I feel like I can't. Right. So really what we're talking about here is a boundary. Right. And this is like, can I set a boundary or not? Right. And I, I help people set boundaries. And, you know, the first thing that comes up for them is fear around how the other person is going to react. Yeah. Yeah. So, if you are going to, so how do we set a boundary? We set a boundary like this. We feel something doesn't feel right to us in a relationship. So we sit with it. We bring awareness to it. We let the little trigger be the teacher. And then we figure out what it is that we needed that we're not getting. Mm -hmm. And then we express that through a boundary. And if the other person is offended by that or takes it personally, then you need to reevaluate that every relationship, you right? Do. That says a lot about the state of your relationship, right? So you should be setting boundaries at the beginning of a relationship. Everybody should. Mm -hmm. You don't know the person yet. Exactly. The fear that I see is the fear of not being selected. Oh, if I do that, they're going to walk away. All of them, collectively, every single one. And I say, are you saying you don't think you're interesting enough to be around without bartering your body? Yeah. And I mean, I, I've, haven't you had relationships with people or like where you're just like being around them? Like, yeah, it could be a sexual relationship, right? But just like being around them is enough. Like it's fulfilling. Right. So I think we have to look at like all of the pressure that we're putting on that one part of the relationship, this sexual part, right? Like that's a lot of pressure. I think it feels like the easiest part, to be honest. And that's why it's the low lying fruit. It's so easy to 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 connect that way because listen, guys will sleep with anybody right? Like, how, how, how can I have sex tonight? I say, I want to, like, that's it. I can find someone in an hour, right? Yeah. And so it's easy to get someone to sleep with you. And so it's easy to get that acceptance in that way. But it's, it takes a lot more courage and confidence to be accepted for your character, your personality, your integrity, the way you think, how you feel, who you are. Yeah. So sometimes I say guys can, guys have sex because they can. Um, women should have sex when they want <laughs> right when they want and that's the difference right and unfortunately we both know this 
there there has been so much conditioning in our society uh for so long but it is changing like yeah. i will say that it is changing right but like um you know, we, women were very sexualized and, and made to believe that the only thing that they had to offer was their bodies, right? You know, it's 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 indoctrinated into a lot of us, right? So, and I love the part that you said there when you said, you know, I was guilty of that. Like, I, if, if I wasn't getting that physical contact, like, it made me feel kind of, like, insecure, Yeah. right? And as you were saying that, I thought, yeah, but, like, you know, so then you get it, but it's a false sense of security you get. 100%. That's the heartbreak. Yeah. Because you're doing something to make you feel secure, but it's not real security. No. And that's the heartbreak. So if you're asking like, is that avoidable? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right? Uh, like let's set proper boundaries and do things that actually make us truly more secure, safe and stable. <laughs> let's, let's work on our confidence because as women, that's what's holding us down the most. The ones who say, I can't do no kissing for three months. Dating. Nobody's going to hang around. Those yeah. women absolutely need to work on their confidence because there's more to you than access to your body. Hey, listen, I've been married for like 17 years and I still got guys hanging around. <laughs> They're waiting. <laughs> so like, yeah, yeah. You know, you can totally do that and you should do that, right? And you should have always have options. I mean, I tell people all the time, right? Like even when you have a job you really like, you should still be putting your resume out and going for interviews just to stay ready, right? Like, you know, so I think that you should always have lots of options. And that's what I like about the no kissing for three months dating rule is that you don't limit your options during that time period either, right. which is really, really important. Right. And I, I think what's, yeah, like, I don't, I, I've never done the online dating thing. Yeah. I never have had a relationship with anyone that I've met online. <laughs> Any relationship that I've had has always come like out of um, an organic social situation that I've been in. Um, and uh, someone that I've been around for an extended period of time. Right. right. So any serious relationship I've had has always been someone who I've known for a while socially. And I consider them a friend. Right. And, and that really changes the dynamic of your relationship when you know someone before you really get into it. It it does, because, you know, the foundation has been created that sustains a relationship that holds it up, which is friendship, yeah. respect share goals and timelines because you've communicated what it is that you want and and you're finding alignment in there so shared goals and timelines appreciation of each other's efforts i have people who say um you know uh, well he's she, i'm i'm going to think she's not interested if she's not touching me if she's not kissing me and i say look if you don't appreciate the fact that i put time aside to come and spend with you i put pants on motherfucker i yeah. put pants on I, put I showed my, up, okay? I showed up. up. I, I put all this time, I put hours of my schedule aside for you and it means nothing. There's no appreciation of my efforts. I got to dismiss you because if you don't appreciate this much effort, you're not going to appreciate this much. Uh, so friendship, respect, share goals and timelines, appreciation of each other's efforts, ability to communicate, solve things together and make each other laugh. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, it's the only thing that you have a whole thing like you think that's keeping you secure or keeping them with you is sex in your body guess what there's it's not going to work because there's a lot of sex and a lot of bodies out there right they'll so cheat. they'll cheat when your body isn't available yeah and I mean like when we're talking about real real solid relationships I that friendship piece to me is so important like you really should be friends with that person too right and I I love in our group of friends <laughs> right like I love how the couples you know like they're not they're secure they're securely attached right and we're all friends and they're friends with each other and we can all like kind of you know 
we're, we're right so it's like you can see the secure attachment in like all of the relationships around us in our friends group and you can see that they are friends mm-hmm. and it's so much more fun that way right like it's so much more fun than just having this guy come along who wants you for your body and for the good blowjob you give him or whatever and he gets really angry when you know you dance a certain way or talk to a guy or whatever right like let's bring friendship back to long-term relationships it's better for everyone including the other people you're around right I you know I so I'm looking at what's happening right now at the no kissing for three months dating girl. I'm seeing how it's taking traction now. You see it on TikTok, lots of people talking about this, uh, ever more, ever more. And mm. I, I, you know, I'm saying, let's look at that divorce rate in 20 years. Let's see what happens in 20 years. How it's like, if if as this becomes a groundswell, will that divorce rate fall? It's going to so be an is, yeah, yeah, and um. This is why we need to get research dollars so we can do our own study. <laughs> ah, I like that idea. Right? You can do that. Yeah. Listen, I will, I will, you're you're in charge of that part because you got the you got the letters after your name. Yeah. So they're more likely to take, you know, your lead on that, but bring me in on the project and we'll work on this together. Yeah. And you know, I was thinking the other day too. Um that, have you ever ta- talked to any of your clients about the speaker listener technique in relationships? So, yeah, so I'll I'll do stuff with couples sometimes, right? And I'll say, well, practice the speaker listener technique right now in the office. And then I want you guys to do it when you're at home, when something comes up that's a little bit conflictual, right? Instead of fighting. And basically what it is, it's like, you can have a talking stick if you want, right? And it's like, we have the speaker and they get, they're concise. They say what they need to say in about 15 seconds. And then the listener repeats back to them what they think they're saying or what they heard yeah and it's so amazing when you do this with people they're not even on the same page yeah so a lot of these arguments that we're talking about it's trigger 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 and you're not even fighting about the same thing right like it's like what is the story I'm telling myself right now so I come home and the garbage isn't taken out and this and that you know and I'm like you didn't take the garbage out, you know, like you don't care about me, this, 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 and this. Right. And it's like, let's slow that down. Right. Like, what are you really saying? So let's like really slow down speaker, listener, speaker, listener. And like, what comes out of it is like something more like, you know, I'm really tired. And when I come home from work and I thought it was going to be this way, it makes me feel really let down. So like, you can really like go places when you're really listening and then listening to understand what they're saying right because it's like both people are speaking English and I'm sitting there and I'm like helping them translate yeah right and when people who are in relationships who they're not friends with the person where the relationship has become almost like transactional right there's so much miscommunication going on yes so much miscommunication right and then when your only go-to is the sex when you're in a bad place and you're not communicating well that is not going to work for you (laughs) it's not going to save you in those moments either right like maybe at the beginning like you know that that you know the sex it's all spicy and we're all like riled up but like down the line if we're really like invested in this relationship you know and we're expressing our needs and doing this dance with each other and things aren't going well the sex isn't going to save you now yeah. it's not you know agree. agree and I I mean I gotta say selfish short-term thinkers they don't care that you're distressed because every fight is going to bring them to some makeup sex so they got the kiss on your lips so that they could get the sex from your body and then you find out that they're wrong for you but you're in love and you're trying to change them They don't care to change. They like who they are, but they're still getting the sex from you. So it's time for us to unsubscribe from kissing to find out who they are and fighting is normal, fighting is healthy or arguing is normal, arguing is healthy. We need to unsubscribe to all of that. Yeah, and I mean, all of these things that you're saying, these are like the kind of things that like people just accept as truths, right? Because they know 
And I'm like, okay, well, right there. And when we're talking about the potential, right? People who accept these things as truths, that's, I want potential around this because if you accept that as true, that shows me that you have no potential to learn, right? And that's what I was saying. Like, I, I am a type of person where I am excited when I don't know something. Uh, uh, uncertainty makes me curious, right? So I don't know everything. And that's exciting because I have a lot to learn. All of those things that you just said, those are people who think they already know everything. And those are the people who have no potential. That's what that is. <laughs> I want to end on this and and I want I love that you said a lot to learn because I think people have a lot to learn from you and I want I, I want us to tell them <laughs> I want us to tell them where they can find you. So yes. where are you where are you in the in the in the world wide web where people can come and connect with you? Yeah, so I do run my own practice. So it is called Soul Warriors. Yeah. So it is soulwarriors.ca. So you can like go and check that out. And then uh, you can also find me on Instagram as well. Yeah, on Instagram, it is T-O underscore Mel and then three underscores to Mel. So at soulwarriors.ca, that's my website page. And you can book a free consultation there with me. Uh, all the services are on there, motivational videos and stuff like that. So it's a fun place to stop. And if you have time on the internet, if you're surfing the world wide web. <laughs> you are amazing I love you I love you too I love you too and I want to see you soon yeah I sent you a bunch of for us to do fun things in the summer <laughs> oh, <laughs> like absolutely. dancing <laughs> absolutely well we got um what are we doing we have uh all day I dream we do have all day I dream yes we do we do yeah and there's gonna be some more in between I know that because you and I we got our dancing shoes on all the time we got to go back to Cabana. <laughs> yeah, you you know, that's cool? <laughs> yeah summer, yes. summer 2023 yeah i'm excited you. I love you. Tonight. people go find her she really truly is incredible thank you you're incredible too thank you melissa all right thank you so much for having me on i'll talk to you soon bye my love bye